About a month ago, I published this video, GPT-4 versus Bing Chat, where I tested uh, each of the models. And uh, the video has been doing pretty well, but a lot of people complained that I didn't do it right, and I used the wrong Bing Chat mode for this. Bing Chat has three different modes, the more balanced mode, more precise mode, and the more creative mode. In the video, I used the more balanced mode, which is the default. In the comments of the video, a lot of people complained that I should have used the more creative mode instead of the more balanced mode, because I said that GPT-4 is more creative than Bing Chat. And they say it's not true, and they say I used the wrong mode. So I'll repeat some parts of the video, with the more creative mode and see how they compare. On the left here, we have the Chat GPT Plus, which is the paid version. I'm paying $20 a month for that. And the GPT-4 model. Uh, you can select the GPT-3.5 model or the GPT-4 model. If you select the GPT-4 model, even now at the end of April of 2023, you still have the cap of 25 messages for every three hours. And on the right here, we have a Microsoft Edge browser with the Bing Chat in the more creative mode. So let's ask some questions and I'll compare the responses between the two models and focus on creativity to see if there's any improvement between the more balanced model and the more creative model. For the first question, I'll ask about investing. So I can invest $1,000 each month. Let's say I'm 30 years old, I'll retire at 65. And I will say that I already have emergency funds. So don't worry about that. I'll give it an extra twist this time. I'll say, give me two options and explain your reasoning. First, maximize my returns with high risk tolerance. So this would be like aggressive investment plan. And second, more conservative approach. And to see if we can do some math behind this, also estimate the portfolio value at age of 65 for each option. This question is nothing extraordinary and any uh, decent financial advisor should be able to do this and even estimate the value of the portfolio at, at age 65, given uh, average market and returns for the last three decades. So let's see how they do. So here's chat GPT or GPT-4, and here's Bing chat in the creative mode. GPT-4 doesn't search the web and it starts generating based on its training data. Uh, Bing chat is a little bit different because it first searches the web to see if it can find any relevant links and then gives you an answer. So both of them give you a pretty long answer. Each of the models uh, split it up into two parts, which is kind of nice. So uh, the GPT-4 gave me kind of the standard disclaimer, it's not a financial advisor. And then it gave me option one, and option two. So in option one, it gave me invest into stocks, assumed 8% uh, return, which is the historical average, which I think is pretty accurate. And then as far as the future value, it even gave me the formula on how to calculate uh, the future value and estimated the future value at uh, $2.2 million. For the Bing chat in the creative mode, it uh, pretty much said the same thing. Invest in exchange traded funds uh, like S&P 500 or total stock market. Um, GPT-4 said to also buy international stocks. Here it's, I think, mostly focusing on uh, domestic stocks. And uh, look for low cost, easy to trade things. And what's really nice about Bing Chat compared to GPT-4, that Bing Chat also gives you uh, references. So here it pulled in information from NerdWallet, which is a pretty good website for investing, kind of like the basics. Uh, and it estimates the value of my portfolio at uh, $2.6 million at age 65. I didn't go uh, deeply into the math on why it's different because they both uh, assumed, I think, the same returns, 8%. It might be uh, the difference between yearly compounding or monthly compounding or uh, when exactly do you start? It's, is it 35 years of investing or 34 years of investing? Uh, but it's pretty close. For the more conservative investing, uh, it chose quite different options. So uh, GPT-4 picked like a 60% stocks and 40% bonds. And uh, that would give you an average yearly return of 5%, which I think is pretty reasonable. And the estimated value of a portfolio of 1.2 million. So I think that's pretty good. That's kind of standard advice. Uh, for Bing uh, Chat in the creative mode, for number two, it went super, super conservative. Uh, it told me to put it in a high yield savings account. And that would only result in uh, $500,000 by age 65. Neither of those answers is right or wrong. It depends on how conservative. I would say the option two for GPT-4 is kind of middle of the road. I think that's what I would recommend for people who are more conservative with their investments. I personally would go 100% stock at age 30. Uh, but uh, the high yield savings account, it's like extremely conservative and probably not a great investment strategy for a 30 year old. But I asked for conservative and it gave me conservative. So I would say as far as the differences between the responses, they're pretty similar as far as quality. Uh, what is nice about GPT-4, it, it gave you the formulas on how it estimated the portfolio value, but it didn't explicitly ask for it in the uh, prompt for the Bing chat. So 
I would rate them uh, about equal for this particular uh, question. For the next question, I'm asking like a school problem. Which one is heavier, the Eiffel Tower or the Great Pyramid in Giza? Explain your reasoning in detail. Discuss the materials used. Provide precise values when possible. So let's see how they do. So here's GPT-4 and here's Bing Chat. As before, GPT-4 goes straight into a generating response because all the data is in the model. Uh, for Bing Chat, it searches the web for a pretty long time before it starts generating any responses. Again, both of the responses are quite good. Uh, for GPT-4, it's split into two parts. It talks about the Great Pyramid of Giza and then it talks about the Eiffel Tower. Uh, what's interesting, it gave me one and one here. Uh, for the Bing Chat, it gives you kind of bullet points, which makes more sense. So it talks about the Great Pyramid in Giza. What's interesting here, it gives you kind of uh, some unnecessary information uh, about when it was built and uh, who it was built for. Uh, I was mostly asking about the weight, but it's nice to have the extra information. It talks about the building materials, which I asked for, and it estimates the weight at uh, 5.9 millimetric tons. And then it talks about the Eiffel Tower. Again, it gives you a little bit of historical background, and it estimates the uh, weight at um, 10,000 metric tons. And based on these two values, it gives you uh, the final answer that the Great Pyramid Giza is significantly heavier than the Eiffel Tower, so about 500 times heavier. For the Bing Chat, uh, the answers are also extremely good. I would say even better than for the GPT-4. Uh, it splits it also into two parts. So you have the Eiffel Tower estimates the uh, weight at uh, 10,000 tons, which is the same as GPT-4. Uh, and it gives you also the um, material, which is iron. And again, one of the big benefits of the Bing Chat, it gives you reference of where you got this data, as opposed to GPT-4, where you don't know where it came from. I really like the references and I'm starting to lean more towards the creative mode of the Bing check compared to GPT-4. Then it talks about the Great Pyramid Giza and estimates the weight at 5.7 million pounds. So GPT-4 estimated 5.9 million. So that's pretty close. All both of those are estimates nobody can uh, calculate precisely. It talks about how many stones were used and the weight of each uh, stone. And it also gives you some uh, additional information and densities of uh, the different materials used. In this case, I actually prefer the answer from the Bing chat. It doesn't go into the unnecessary detail of the history of the structures, but it goes into nice detail about the weight and the densities, which is what I asked for, and even calculates how much heavier the pyramid is compared to the Eiffel Tower. Great answer from Bing Chat, and it's free compared to the GPT-4, which is not free. This question is a repeat from the previous video. Write code in Python that will calculate the area of a triangle from length of its three sides. In the code, ask for the three sides as A, B, and C, entered sequentially. In the previous video, the GPT-4 code was more creative because it also included contingency when the three values given, the A, B, and C, cannot form a triangle. In the previous video, the Bing Chat code did not um, include this contingency. So in this particular case, the change of uh, Bing Chat to the more creative mode did not result in any difference, and the GPT-4 code is still better. So maybe for the coding, GPT-4 is better than the Bing Chat. So the code works for both of them. Uh, it asks you uh, for the different uh, sides of the triangle, and then it calculates the um, correct area based on the Heron's formula. So both of those parts are correct. But what the GPT-4 code also includes is, is uh, kind of a check if the values you give it actually can form a triangle. In order for the three values to form a triangle, A plus B must be bigger than C, and A plus C must be bigger than B, or B plus C must be bigger than A because you can't have two sides be shorter than the third side because you can't make a triangle. So the GPT-4 code tests for it. So here is the test, if uh, and all these different conditions. If this condition is satisfied, it will give you the area. It prints out the area that it calculated above. And if it's not true, it will print the statement, the given side lengths cannot form a triangle. And here on the right, we have the Bing Chat code. So it asks for all the different sides of the triangle. It does the proper calculation. Here's the area, that's the Heron's formula. It also gives you a nice annotation of what it is. And then it prints out the area of the triangle. But it doesn't have the extra part of the code that GPT-4 included, where it checks if it actually can form a triangle. So if you run this code and give it some values that can form a triangle, uh, one of these square roots will be a negative value and it will give you an error. And you will know what the error is if you don't understand the code yourself. Uh, you might think that the code itself is broken, but it's actually just incorrect calculation because you gave it uh, values that can form a triangle. Now I'll ask a pharma question. What is Hallison? How does it work? What's special about it? Give as much detail about mechanism of action as possible. And for GPT-4 sake, I also added include relevant references. So let's run it, see what we get. Again, both responses are very good. 
Uh, here in the GPT-4 answer, it gives you a kind of general idea of what Hallison is, who discovered it, uh, where the name comes from. Then it gives you the reference, which is the cell paper that came out 2020. Then it goes into more detail what it is. It tells you it's an antibiotic. It was identified from 100 million different molecules to kill bacteria. Uh, it talks about the mechanism of action. It tells you it's not fully understood, but it gives you kind of idea from the cell paper. Then it goes into the results from the paper that it's effective against different strains of bacteria. And it kind of gives you like a summary paragraph about uh, what it just told you. It kind of looks like a Wikipedia article. It goes into the same amount of information that the uh, Wikipedia article gives you. It doesn't really give you that much more. And then for the Bing uh, creative mode, it uh, gives you also that it's new antibiotic. It has a potent activity against various different uh, bacteria. And it also tells you that Halicin was previously developed as a kinase inhibitor, but it showed the poor results in the trials. And then they identified using AI that it's antibiotic. It talks about animal tests. And what I like about Bing, and I've been saying this throughout this video, it gives you a lot more references. So in GPT-4, I asked for reference and it gave me the cell paper where Halicin was discovered to be antibiotic. But in the Bing chat, it gave you a lot more references. Actual reference Wikipedia, which I think is good. It gave you the primary cell paper, which I think is this one, but also gave you a couple more papers that you can look into. So as far as a researching tool, I think Bing chat in the creative mode is better than GPT-4 because if you're interested, you can click on the references and you don't have to search the web uh, on its own. So in this particular case, I would give thumbs up to the Bing creative mode. And at last, look at generation of jokes. In the original video, GPT-4 gave me original jokes that I could not find on the internet but the standard mode of Bing chat gave me jokes that I could find on the internet. So it wasn't as creative as GPT-4. So now let's uh, see how it's different in the creative mode. So uh, this is what I asked. Can you create some really good Chuck Norris jokes? I would like to hear original jokes, not jokes found on the internet. And I had this problem in the, in the previous video as well, not jokes found on the internet. And I, I added more in this case. It is very important to me that the jokes are original generate five original jokes. So I really, really emphasize that I want original stuff. So each system gave me five different jokes. They all look pretty good, but I'll uh, search on Google to see if I can find any of these on the web. And then I uh, will tally up which ones are original and which ones are off the web. For GPT-4, the first one is Chuck Norris doesn't need a watch to tell time. He simply decides what time it is. Uh, I found that one on the web right here. So that one is not original. The second one, when Chuck Norris does a push-up, he's not lifting himself up. He's pushing the earth down. That's right here. So that's also not original. It's interesting because in the first video, uh, I think most of the GPT-4 ones were original, but now I'm getting different results. And that's one interesting thing about the GPT-4 and all these models. Like when you submit the same prompt multiple times, you're going to get different responses. So the third one is they say curiously killed the cat, but in reality, it just met Chuck Norris. That one is original, but it's not very funny. So yeah, it's like a half credit. The fourth one is scientists don't try to find a cure for the common cold. They're just trying to find a way to make it survive Chuck Norris's immune system. That's also not super funny, but it is original. I, could, I didn't find it anywhere on the web. And the last one is Chuck Norris doesn't need a flashlight in the dark. The darkness is afraid to cover him. And that one is also original. That one is actually pretty funny. I like that one a lot. Uh, so I would say three original to another original. But the two of the three that are original are not that great. And now let's check the Bing responses. So the first one says, Chuck Norris doesn't need a parachute to skydive. He just jumps out of the plane and lands on his feet. Uh, that one is creative. I could not find that on the web. The second one is Chuck Norris can make a snowman out of sand. He just stares at it until it freezes. That one doesn't really make much sense, but it is original. Chuck Norris can play chess with only one piece. He always wins by checkmate in one move. Uh, that one is pretty funny. It's kind of absurd, but I like it. There's a variant of this joke that uh, Chuck Norris can checkmate you with a knight. You kind of need a little bit of check chess knowledge to understand that that's funny because you can't checkmate with uh, just a knight. Uh, but this one is also original, so I give it points for that. The fourth one is Chuck Norris can light a fire with his breath. He just exhales and everything bursts into flames. That one is really funny. I like that one a lot. And that one is also original. So, so far, four original jokes. And the last one is... Chuck Norris can speak any language fluently. He just says his name and everyone understands him. And that one is also original. So in this case, Bing Chat in the creative mode, people are correct. It is uh, much better and it can give you a lot more original responses. In the balance mode, uh, Bing Chat gave me a bunch of responses from the web. But when you put it in the creative mode, it gives you original stuff. So in summary, I think the criticism people had on my original video was valid. 
uh, when you use Bing Chat in the balance mode, it's not very original or creative. And once you put it in the creative mode, it is much, much better. And I would say it's on par with uh, GPT-4. And in some ways, actually better because it gives you the references, which is really useful when you're doing some type of a scientific research. And you want to double check that um, what it gives you is actually true. So going forward, I think I'm going to use uh, Bing Chat in the creative mode uh, a lot more. And maybe I will even turn off the subscription to GPT-4. I'll test it more for coding to see uh, if G GPT-4 is better for coding. Because I think GPT-4 can give you longer responses than Bing Chat. I'll test that for coding. And if Bing Chat is just as good for coding uh, as uh, GPT-4, then I don't really see the point of paying uh, $20 a month for GPT-4. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next video.